Hello everyone. Hope everybody has had a nice lunch but are still awake and it was not too heavy. You know, I always say, you know, I think first question to the panel should be, should we have it when people are hungry and want to go for lunch? Or should it be after they come back for lunch and they are sleepy? <laughs> but I'll save that question. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> so uh, yeah, today, you know, we definitely are in a uh, uh, digital uh, explosion happening and there is this omnichannel uh, consumer journey where uh, you know at the right at the right time you need to target the consumer with the right messaging so many things happening so many platforms so many tools so uh, in in this kind of a scenario one wonders you know is it becoming more easier is it becoming more complex is it becoming more efficient uh, and with this i think we'll open the panel and my uh, first question um, you know, I think uh, we prepared, you know, uh, before we're coming over here. And I think the first question will be, of course, uh, you know, uh, on what are the key challenges today in this kind of a scenario? And I would like to direct this to Sujay uh, from L'Oreal. Hello. Hi. Hey, thank you. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, I think uh, it's a tricky one. And it's a tricky one. Why? Because... Uh, the way things have kind of evolved in the last 10 years, uh, it has become even more challenging for us. And it's going to uh, be more challenging going further. And I'm, I'm sure a lot of my fellow members in the panel might conquer this view. Uh, in a nutshell, if I have to put it, it's problem of plenty. Problem of plenty in terms of more number of consumers, more number of platforms, one number of maybe campaigns and things which we have to do as a marketer day in and day out. So that problem of plenty is actually posing a lot of problem for us as a marketer. And I'll probably go a little bit deep into all those three facets. Uh, uh, problem of plenty in terms of consumers, I think like uh, the explosion has happened like some six, seven years back when Geo kind of disrupted everything via data and probably everybody in the country had, had a mini TV in their hands. So, so that problem of plenty happened. Uh, so with that, the challenge for us as a marketer is actually to figure out the right consumer. And that is what the constant struggle is. And depending on the kind of brand you are, the kind of sharper targeting you would need, uh, that problem of plenty actually poses a lot of challenge. And that is where probably a lot of brands are looking at first party data, how to leverage that data, how to create lookalikes of the data. And we can probably touch upon that topic. Uh, the second question is probably problem of plenty of platforms. Probably a decade back, it was just Facebook. Now you can name at least n social networks who have a sizable presence in the country. So, so just to figure out how you will activate uh, your campaigns across these platforms is a problem of plenty for us. And then, obviously, problem of plenty in terms of activating those campaigns because we as a marketers are in this constant uh, circular thing where it's like, how many number of campaigns? What should be the objective of the campaign? Should we do? Should we not do? Again, then there is this new layer of uh, real-time marketing and then uh, what we are doing for a content calendar. So there are so many things. Earlier as a brand, it was just like, okay, two campaigns, H1, H2, you are done. Now, that, that problem of plenty of campaign is also kind of uh, throwing a lot of challenge and I'll, yeah, on, on that note, I'll just, yeah. yeah, yeah thank, thanks so much, Sujay. Absolutely. So many things to do. And, but, I mean, I've, I've, when we were discussing go backstage, definitely a very, very eminent panel with a lot of experience in tackling this kind of a problem of plenty. So, yeah, you know, uh, yeah, HDFC would have, you know, definitely used uh, evolved over these years, one of the first movers in digital marketing uh, from a homegrown brand perspective. Yes, Javed, please. Uh, so, omnichannel, if I have to be slightly loud about the fact, it's a myth. It's a dream. It's a dream of every dig digital marketer. Okay, but uh, it's, a, it's a distant dream. It's like an oasis. I reach over there, but then I realize, oh, we are nowhere close to it. Okay. So, see, now what's omnichannel? Omnichannel has to be aptly supported by campaign orchestration, campaign suppression. Okay. How can you orchestrate a campaign when you don't even know my first party data, which is let's say email, SMS, website notification. Okay, they have no clue what my second party data is doing. And there is absolutely no clue how they're getting exposed to third party data. Okay, so when there's so much of in silos happening, okay, yes, maybe within my first party data, I can control omnichannel orchestration, but look at this fact. You might be uh, eligible for credit card. 
okay, I am talking to you across my three, four of my platforms, but you, if you are a credit card eligible, you might be eligible for a personal loan also, right? For an auto loan also, right? So how many of my campaigns are you getting exposed to and that much of media I'm wasting on you, right? So a true omni-channel will be where I know your channel propensity, where I know your time propensity, where I know your content type propensity, and I can sequentially tell you this is the way I'll talk it. And layer that with the entire digital platform is my offline channel. That should not be ignored and that can't be ignored, right? And, that, and then somebody will come and say, Bot sare calls are hai. So now my thing is, if we have to do a true real-time omnichannel orchestration of campaigns, all this data has to come, have one customer view, and then I can first off do the campaign and then I can also simultaneously suppress the campaign. Uh, forget about banking, uh, because banking is a combination of online and offline. I've seen real-time e-commerce campaigns. I have bought the product, but still they're remarketing me with the same product. I have bought it. Where are you, where, why are you wasting media monies on me? So I think that's where the uh, lacuna is. And uh, yeah, I think that's the way we can handle it, if we can handle it, yeah. yeah th thanks so much. Uh, you know, if, uh, Ritika and Yaraka, if you all have any points to add on your challenges. Okay, so I completely agree with uh, what Javi just said. But uh, interestingly, you know, I think omni-channel, I think, of course, there's a lot of way to go. Uh, trust me, like, you know, I come from Dr. Eddie's whereby we literally like trying to crack omni-channel because our channels are a lot more physical and online, as you can imagine, the conversation doesn't really stop in media, it goes beyond, right? There's physical connect with the doctor uh, also happening. So, uh, you know, the point I'd like to add is the problem of plenty is, is good in this current scenario to have as long as it justifies. Um, and in the incremental value, like you said, the media money which is kind of getting wasted on a consumer right now. Uh, so the conversation really is, the, is the ad technology platform which you have chosen been configured correctly to probably give you a different messaging? Like you said, there was a credit card, you know, a customer. Could there be a you know, cross-sell to a home loan customer or a, a personal loan customer? Configuration is the problem. So I feel like though dynamic creatives really exist today, um, the configuration is probably not in the stages yet. So I think maybe that's an area where we could probably, you know, improve on. Yeah, so, uh, so I think he rightly put it, uh, omni-channel is really a dream. I mean, uh, we can keep chasing it, but I think, uh, I think what's, what's really important is to, uh, to really understand um, uh, the, the, the purpose of these different omni-channel platforms for you as a brand. Okay, I'm not saying that we should not be doing omni-channel, but are these really platforms coming together for you to really solve a purpose or the, or the problem for your brand? Because sometimes I have seen that, you know, brands just go and want to invest in multiple platforms without really understanding what is your expectations from these platforms, right? So, uh, so yeah, omni-channel is something which, which is really important, but I think the right platform strategy for executing an omni-channel is equally important. Thanks. Thanks so much, Siddharth. You have uh, because you got an MIQ to solve some of their problems. So, yeah, absolutely, uh, Chaya. Thanks a lot. So, I think these these problems are real, right? And uh, that's why what we have been doing is we have been connecting data, uh, you know, from various sources, and that's what we specialize in in a very good way. Uh, and then, of course, we also talk about how programmatic can help you with omni-channel buying. Uh, it is not perfect for sure. But I think, uh, you know, we have to look at the what is the best solution uh, or what is the best technology I have right now. And within that uh, framework, programmatic definitely is the best answer we have. Uh, and uh, what we have seen is that, um, you know, we have experience in other markets as well. And over a period of time, as these channels come up, new channels come up, uh, programmatic has been the technology which has been able to kind of combine them in the right way. Uh, and, and that's because, you know, uh, you are going through the audience strategy. Uh, you are moving away from your earlier content-based advertising strategy and you are moving more and more in, into audience strategy. And definitely there is a need for uh, targeting my audience across channels. And programmatic is the technology which is already built and, uh, you know, is doing that to an extent. It all depends on how platforms open up, talk to each other and then, you know, programmatic uh, is able to do more justice to the problem uh, and over a period of time it does happen because, because there is a genuine need in the market and things have to move in that way. Thanks so much, uh, you know. So, 
while we audience definitely audience targeting is uh, definitely a priority over here so you can build efficiencies now while we'll discuss more on uh, programmatic definitely uh, want to understand you know other tools you know beyond programmatic because when we come to programmatic we'll address are there other tools of javed sujoy you all have you know any of you who have used and what have been your and you might have used multiple tools no multiple platforms so uh, if you all can just share uh, something with the audience on your experiences and your recommendations so i think uh, without naming each of these tools let's discuss the use cases okay right so we have understood that um, we have learned it the hard way that digital the way we say digital is digital's advantage generally goes as a disadvantage because if you go to the organization and say i am going to do digital marketing people will say oh dhanda kitna aayega which is not the case okay so how we have evolved and we have made these tools stacks basically on top funnel mid funnel and believe me mid funnel is a very considered it's underused people use the name mid funnel but i i don't know how many brands are literally doing mid funnel and then obviously the performance stack at the core okay so what i've done is if you have start from performance we have taken all our home grown first party data martech uh, tools as our completely performance because given the the brand the pull that it has the first party number of data that we have okay i think the own data does notifications email sms website and today website we have a 90% personalization rate on website obviously to the identified base okay but the entire website gets personalized okay so that combination is doing in its best in terms of performance but what we always lacked is nurturing and being at the toma when people the intent of it we can always give you a offer we know which is the segment where i should be talking to okay but when i should be talking to was always a question we have realized that you know with a brand like us we don't really need to be at the moment of truth moment of tr truth should be at his mind when he's looking for a loan because you generally don't start looking for a loan you start looking for the car or you start looking for the house or you start looking for your travel okay and then comes the enabler which are we okay so what we have started doing is we one we have found out for a toma and if you have to do a tv like planning at a much more cost effective rate uh, which is we do a sufficiency led tv like planning okay the usage of video beat the world of ctv combined with uh, youtube and a part of meta and obviously how we are using the videos a meta's usage of video vis-a-vis -vis youtube vis-a-vis -vis ctv is a brilliant combination that can be used as a top funnel okay with the right measurement mix and the right objective right then comes mid funnel where we are using programmatic to a largest extent but mid funnel's objectivity is completely nurturing and to grow that channel up because if i have to grow my remarketing pool if you know offline sales you remember people used to ask ye do business aaj hai kal ke liye kya hai so for digital that's mid that's a mid funnel that's my offline pipeline okay and third for performance i told you we are completely dependent on my home grown first party tools that we having okay uh, so that's how we have divided the stack across top mid and bottom since you spoke about mid funnel and since content creators play a very very big role in the mid funnel today and the tools not all the platforms are going to be able to manage that you know any thoughts on that uh, sujoy you are also i mean in the category that will depend on content creators a lot yeah uh, i think yeah uh, as far as mid funnel is concerned and uh, if you ask me personally uh, my pov is that i'm i'm slowly looking at a li uh, literally funnel less journey because uh, uh, we as a beauty and cpg brand what we look at is how we can create demand and then convert demand if if i have to just put it in two words so uh, in create demand there are a lot of things which we uh, do and basically it is about one is obviously toma and then second is about the aspiration which you create because being a professional and luxury brand how you kind of create that aspiration and then uh, sometimes it is all about the brand story narrative because we have some fantastic powerful brands and it's important to tell those uh, stories to the consumers and to create that aspiration once i think uh, in a way you have managed to do that the whole idea is to convert that demand and in our case specifically the conversion happens uh, across multi channels so the conversion can happen in a salon conversion can happen uh, on an amazon so uh, challenge is today is not only look at that that whether you call it a linear funnel or funnel journey but uh, to drive that aspiration and that is where 
a lot of content creators play a role. And uh, uh, given the fact how probably uh, platforms like Instagram has evolved in the country, uh, that is something which we are keenly looking at. But again, the story comes back to that same point, is how you are attributing your final uh, conversions to whatever content you have created. And that is the same question, Danda kitna hai? That, that same thing pops up. And as a marketer, we face, face that challenge. But what we have tried to do is slowly getting into these models where you can attribute uh, the final conversion to uh, whatever the content which you have created and probably the media which you have put behind that content. So are you building? So, uh, sorry, just just one point on this. Okay, on the mid funnel, since you since you mentioned. So uh, while uh, I would really love to connect and convert, that is the dream for me. But it really doesn't happen that way in all the categories, right? In some of the evolved uh, involved categories, rather, where you know uh, the time for conversion is more. So at times, what happens is you spend so much on the top of the funnel and you forget the middle of the funnel and you expect that the conversion is going to happen. So for so, so the middle of the funnel is equally very important. Like for, uh, I don't want to name any specific thing, but for example, for us influencers is a very big middle funnel content creators, okay, which help us to bring the people from the top of the funnel to the, uh, you know, start considering or start thinking about the brands. So, uh, you know, it's not, it's really important to focus on the middle of the funnel and I completely agree with him on that. Yes. So, you know, when you're speaking, this attribution model, are you using, are there platforms today that are helping you to do the attribution or are you building your own? models? So actually we are doing both and without naming any particular platform at this stage, uh, what I would probably just simply put it in the way is that yes, there are platforms which can do a certain amount of attribution for you. But then uh, the way we are also looking at it is that uh, we are looking at a platform where we can do cross-platform attribution. That is where uh, a lot of technology investments are going into. I think um, with Ads Data Hub coming in, Okay, it's in beta, but the way we are trying to see is, um, be it impression-led, yes, the platforms are restricted, but it, it's impression-led to offline conversion, or even conversion from a last-click attribution, which is a homegrown, let's say it can be a WhatsApp, email, SMS website, but the impact of your paid, and the impact of all these things that we're doing, okay, to a conversion is kind of, ADH might be able to solve for us at least, that's what we're trying to do. And that's so, we have to build our own models because there is no other tool which is giving you a out-of-the-box model, yeah. Do you have any thoughts on this because programmatic platforms today do not really, you know, involve the content creator belt of uh, the funnel? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the social layer is where obviously the content creation is happening and that's uh, creating, uh, that, that's a very important factor. I think programmatic is more of a technology solution. So, for example, uh, we have a solution where, you know, if a if brand runs a YouTube campaign, uh, right, what we are able to do is we are able to help them understand that, you know, who are the mini creators on YouTube who are playing a big role in generating more views for your campaign, right? And where consumers are more engaging. And then, you know, that insight is provided to the brand. And with that, obviously, uh, you know, we are able to use those insights to refine the YouTube campaign. At the same time, brand is able to understand, okay, these are the mini influencers who I don't know, but now I know. And I can probably, some of them, I can engage with them directly and take their help to strengthen my mid funnel as well. So I think programmatic can play a role to provide a lot of insights around content creators. And then from there, brand can stitch in their content strategy and connecting with the influencers in the right way to strengthen their mid funnel. Thanks. I, if, if I can also add, I think one of the things, um, you know, one could do is, you know, Pack your share of voice pre-campaign, whether it's, you know, whatever, whatever be the tool you're using, track it post-campaign. Maybe you don't get an immediate nanda, but you definitely can see how it has impact because the connected consumer is interacting. You do get an impact on, you know, either the pull and search or on uh, share of voice. Okay, now from here, you know, since we are talking about, uh, you know, the, the pro proliferation of platforms, there is also the challenge of how can you connect the other mediums. So, you know, one, of course, you have the connected TV kind of things, but you also have TV and print. So you see an ad on TV or print and you are going to immediately search. So any thoughts on that? Any tools you all have used? Uh, so Joy, you have a retail presence, very high retail presence. So anything, you know, if you all can share on what you have done to 
you know are you using again technology to help you reach the gap uh, when it comes to uh, activating multiple mediums uh, one thing which we lean at uh, which is like a little old school but triple m which is like media mix modeling how we do it uh, which media is having what kind of effect uh, uh, in 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 the entire chain but again the the big biggest drawback of that it it's not real time so it it actually dwells on a lot of past data and then it gives you direction that okay fine medium x has got this much contribution or medium y has got this much contribution so it is like a lot of look back to probably plan things but as of now the biggest gap uh, uh, we personally feel is uh, there is nothing which is more of real time which can give you cross platform or cross media uh, solution uh, things are still evolving we are working with our partners but there is no immediate solution for that per se yeah. i think uh, from reporting point of view yes it's not there but i think what we are loving is the way we have cross device uh, connectivity in terms of uh, device serving so today ctv is on the rise at least for the nccs a b plus population that we are looking at 50 60 million at the max we are not going beyond that okay so for that ctv is working really great now what's happening is let's say you are already a logged in customer let's take youtube ctv okay so if you are via youtube you are logged in my remarketing is superbly efficient okay also if if i the whole uh, competition led remarketing is also being on the rise which is on tv versus your mobile screen right third is your uh, digital outdoors it's very niche at this point of time but but maybe at the airports where i know what kind of content to serve and uh, with a pinch of salt the remarketing pool again that i'm because we are focusing on the remarketing pool quite a lot okay so data is being served great but what next with the data especially with the exposed lot non exposed lot and what to do and that's the storytelling that follows here you know from here you know since you also spoke about you know audience being the most uh, important and important aspect of your buying today you know is you know programmatic uh, you know uh, the answer to a lot of uh, the challenges that marketers are facing today what are your views on this okay so uh, maybe a, a correlation from the earlier conversation right so there is there is some bit of programmatic which is great because of the fact that there is signals which is you know you're using to build segments probably personalized messages i feel there's a whole lot of um, gray zone area right like like for example uh, it's a very similar conversation to the last click attribute which we all pretty much fight for right uh, who is the conversion really attributed to whether it was that last mile click or was it some you know the entire journey which kind of uh, correlated to it things like for example outdoor uh, programmatic solutions uh, i'm still you know digesting to the fact that uh, just because i saw a hoarding or i was near the hoarding uh, that was the reason for me to you know go further into the journey from an you know awareness perspective to a consideration is i still feel a gray zone and not really been you know uh, proven uh, today uh only models like media mix modeling for example which are traditional in nature uh, which can actually tell you there is a you know lift in attribute uh, which happens then there there is a merit to kind of you know pulling them into the journey i feel today programmatic still is a very um it's not really evolved to uh, a linear journey of sorts you know uh, to say that this was really the consumer journey mapped out and that is what converted and i think that's that's the challenge that i at least struggle with with programmatic mm -hmm. right any different experience I, i can just add to it so i think i completely agree with ritika and uh, you know there are there is no direct correlation which you can draw and definitely studies are very very important right so for example recently we did uh, one of the first case study on how ctv is helping you on brand lift right so we have to test all these channels on programmatic and we have to do the studies that is very important secondly as much as possible uh, you know when we do the campaigns we try to uh, tie in all the channels together uh, right through an ad server mechanism for example and then do the path to conversion analytics right that you know okay this is the consumer journey uh, you know in terms of the various impressions from across channels and then this was the journey after that consumer some consumers did not go to the website some consumers did go to the website then what did they do there and then mapping it back so um, there is 
uh, you know, so, so I think tools are there, but there is a very important factor of the right tech implementation and then driving the data and analyzing that data. So there is definitely a lot of manual input which goes into making programmatic and data work. And uh, you know, we are, we are not at a stage where everything is automated for sure. But yes, tying it all together is very, very critical. Without that, uh, you, know, you will not uh, really be able to have clear view that these are the channels which I need to invest in, and this is how I need to invest in. Just one more point I wanted to add into the, uh, you know, the conversation that you just said. I think programmatic really helps you make richer understanding of your consumer. Uh, that I must say I completely give. Every nuance, let's say a person visited my website, you know, went into a product page, did not go to a product page, visited my website, probably switched it off immediately, was turned off by the content. You know, those are implications which I think programmatic is contributing to a huge lot which I never thought we had in the previous past. Uh, I think that is a huge advantage. I don't think any research data today uh, gives us so deterministically uh, an understanding of our consumer, which I think programmatic full kudos to that. And in fact, for the fact that we collect all of this in, in forms of CDP today is uh, a huge uh, win for programmatic today. So, yeah. I, I think for us, uh, programmatic has been a great savior in terms of media savings. Okay. So, uh, because we always track in terms of sufficiency, right? So, uh, after what kind of number of frequency with the combination of reach and frequency, after that it does not plateau and the cost of plateau is incrementally high. We, in one campaign, if I could just mention a number in the closed doors, 78 lakhs is what we saved in one month. Okay, just because of doing it. Obviously, there are walled gardens, but programmatic is actually opening, in the, even the OTT is completely opening up, barring the live events. Okay, uh, it's, it's a huge saving for media savings for us, yeah. yeah. So, you know, this brings to the question of, you know, digital you know, and especially with, uh, you know, any digital like campaign where the brand is also advertising elsewhere, it is get me leads, performance. Digital gets dominated by performance, whereas programmatic is best working for very efficient branding. So, you know, Javed, your own experience on this uh, front, you know, uh, how do you see this? On programmatic uh, I mean, or overall? Because on, on programmatic, you know, because you yourself have, uh, you know, used programmatic. Uh -huh. So, in terms of measurement? Yes. So, see, I, I think… I, I think not ROI. just measurement, you know, in ROI. terms of ROI, ROI and especially branding ROI compared right, to right, what right. you do otherwise. Right. So, see, I, I think uh, it's very important, yes. So, the thing is that performance is important, but what is the definition of performance? And I'm sorry, Jahid, huh? I, I said Javid, sorry. Jahid. Okay. Yeah, what's there in the name? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so uh, yeah, performance is important, but what's the definition of performance that I'm looking at? What is the measurement matrix that I'm looking at? That has to be set quite evidently before even we start the campaign or think of rolling out the campaign because it has to be involved in the planning stage and the expectations internally has to be set accordingly. Okay, so when we are using programmatic, okay, yes, it's, it's certainly not as a business generation, but creating the long funnel for us, you know, because like, let's say he was telling there is, it's, it's not funnel. Right? But for us, funnel works very important because finance is not which you just get up and say, okay, I'll buy finance. Okay, it doesn't happen that way. We have to really groom, right? From a lead generation to a lead conversion, there might be a seven-day stat, there might be a 90-day stat. Okay, so how do I keep in touch and meaningful touch? It cannot be always apply now, apply now, right? So that's the whole conversion that really helps me with the proper capping. What next? So for every remarketing, we always think through three different alternatives. If this is getting interacted, then what? If this is not getting interacted after seven days, then what? Okay, and then third as a default. Okay, so I think this entire sequencing is, be it in terms of video, be it in terms of display, okay, uh, it's, it's very well evolved in terms of programmatic uh, platforms that we have, and that really helps in helping our channels, yeah. So essentially your top of funnel is covered and plus you can then track as the consumer, uh, you know, till he converts. Uh, you see, know, just, just uh, the intended. Uh, the, so uh, tracking, tracking. I was telling you, tracking is a very homegrown tool. Okay, we have to see the repercussions of it. Okay. But can I build a very strong pipeline? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, so just one point on your uh, on the programmatic, right? Uh, we have always seen programmatic at the bottom of the funnel, performance, etc., right? But uh, the richness of the data that you have, uh, uh, I think it's it can be very beautifully used for your brand building as well, which I think we are not seeing it that way. And I've seen brand 
brand starting to see it that way, right? For example, if I run a one campaign for three months, and if somebody asks me, say, business kitna aya, it's difficult, but it did much more for your brand. It also is doing something else beyond that. I'm not denying ultimately it's about business, but I think the way to look at it is also, can we use that beyond just performance marketing? Just one point here. Uh, so, you know, in programmatic now, there is so much of innovation which is happening, right? Rich media creatives, landing pages, all of it. There was some way, you know, like a, like maybe, you know, like my colleague here, Siddharth, could, you know, put in value to. Let's say a, a display banner does X for the brand. And it could be category-wise learning because I think what Sujay and Jahid said differently was Sujay is an impulse-based category largely, whereas Jahid is a planned category as such, right? So, hence the journeys differ. But... In case of this, if there is any metric that you could possibly say that, look, this is what uh, dynamic uh, landing pages could actually value add to your brand. This is what a display ad could do. This is what video with dynamism could do. If there were certain, you know, perspectives uh, into this, then ROI could be a lot better conversations, uh, you know, that could help us at least as marketers. Um, it, could, it could give us benchmarks to understand even pre-campaign. So I think one of the reluctance to probably invest so much into innovation and rich media is exactly this, that we don't have benchmarks. So that's something you should please help us with. I completely agree, Nitika. And uh, we do a lot of campaigns for our clients. And we do build this data out, but you're giving me a product idea. So thanks a lot for that. <laughs> yes. I, I think you did want to speak about uh, the efficiencies you were able to build uh, by investing in ad platforms. And of course, you actually gave a number here. You say, saved 78 lakhs, uh, you know. Yeah. Ritika, your, your so, experience. I think the only thing I think which I could say is, see, we also have an impulse category product in the consumer space. So, what we realized we could save is by reducing the number of steps that the consumer takes. So, if I could actually bring the entire consumer experience within uh, where the consumer is, whether it's on a blog website, whether it's on a news website, if I could tell him the entire story there, get him to probably then, you know, uh, spend lesser time with me, make a faster choice. That's something which I think the programmatic platforms really help me with. And I think uh, that's something that everybody should try. Uh, we've done it some, somewhere, HTMLs in the past. Uh, now, if, you know, the entire consumer experience, like the entire storytelling could come in lesser, fewer steps. Something which is like a big saving for us and that's what we realized in our learning. Thanks. You know, now that we have just about four minutes left, you know, hearing each other over here, uh, you know, what do you think we, we could or, you know, our marketers could do differently from what they've been doing so far? Uh, you know, any thoughts on that? Do differently or do better? Yeah. yeah. Okay. I'll go. So, um, so I think, see, as, as we started, right, with saying the problem of plenty. Okay, so, uh, so, so that is going to remain and there are going to be newer platforms, etc. I think from, uh, from my point of view, there are a couple of things that we, that we are doing, okay, uh, is uh, being in this um, uh, self-disruption mode, okay, and being in this beta mode all the time. So what I mean by self-disruption, if you, if, if you see like the, how the pandemic really d disrupted everything for us. So for us, there are some platforms which have always been like, you know, a go-to platforms. I don't want to name the platforms here, but but, uh, uh, but what if uh, I have to think differently and say that, okay, these platforms are not going to be there for me anymore. Are there newer opportunity platforms that I could look at? You know, so, uh, so rather than uh, me getting, uh, you know, uh, swayed by those specific platforms, because normally we just get comfortable with those platforms because they give you scale, et cetera, et cetera. But, uh, but as a brand, there are more opportunities outside, which we, which we tend to a bit overlook at times, I feel. So I think uh, we, we need to do that. And the so second thing is what I would, I always remember what my ex-boss has had told me, that uh, fail, but fail cheap. So I haven't f forgotten that. So uh, I mean, you keep testing, but he always said, "Okay, you want to try it? Try it, but but fail cheap." So I think that's something that I have always remembered, and that's it's 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 good to keep testing. I think that's that's how you will uh, you will uh, uncover some of the platforms which you never tested. Absolutely. I'll quickly add two points. So you know, uh, definitely invest a lot in your data strategy, which will help you you know to uh, have your first party data created and then enriched it and with that develop your consumer understanding and also take your measurement to the next level right so have a complete data strategy that is very very critical 
it's it's not new but i think really the time has come that it has to be done there is no other choice uh, second i would say is that you know there are so many platforms obviously coming in but i think the biggest disruptor of this decade which uh, we feel is connected tv because tv has always been the big daddy in the media and tv is going digital so look at that you know channel very very strongly uh, very and of course you know you don't have to jump into it right away but uh, this is this is the biggest change and you need to be involved and you need to know what is coming i I'll, I'll just add a couple of things because i concur a lot of points one is obviously the data strategy which is going to be critical for everyone measurement which was another thing and i think uh, uh, objective setting because we as marketer we need to be very clear in terms of what is the objective that we are trying to achieve from the campaign and the platform because if we are clear on that measurements will do wonders for us because then we know what we have tested what we have learned so so these are the three key things and obviously keep on exploring new platforms just one one thing in my wish list please whoever is sitting in the audience if in case you have solutions also um please do find solutions for influencer marketing how do we connect the dots uh it's something that we all struggle with uh, the faster we get there i think it will be better for all the content creators also for marketers also uh, so please do work on this if in case uh, whoever is reaching out uh, okay so i think differently come for exchange for media platforms listen to sharp brains and go and implement okay that's on lighter side but yeah i think there's nothing different right it's marketing is at its core okay we have to keep our eyes and eyes open right like, what's the new platform uh every organization will have its platform set it will not change overnight what's new you should have a 10% and i think we were discussing rithika uh, fraud and bots is a big time menace please be aware of it and invest 5 to 6% of your media budgets on fraud awareness tools be it a vulnerability tool or be it your ad campaign frauds the amount of massive uh, the budgets that you'll save and is is humongous uh, so yeah thanks so much jai uh, i was just about to say that because uh, i was waiting for her to say it yeah uh, and uh, absolutely i think we can just close with just one thing is that we should in you mentioned 5 to 6% yes that's what it costs but it builds so much of efficiency your roi for targeting and you know building your own audience pools there are so many advantages of uh, using tools uh, and one should start looking at technologies uh, today and start investing in them uh, i hope everybody enjoyed uh, this session and found it very useful thank you so much all of you uh, for these great insights that all of you have shared today. thank you chaya thank you thank you so much